and Eric is on here for the first time checking in, covering the New York Jets, and he's actually doing it uh, for a very popular uh, face, uh, Facebook page called the New York Jets Facebook page, uh, fan page, excuse me. And I'll have a link in the description area so you guys can check that out. It's about 63,000 members. Eric is one of them. And I thought this is a really good idea for us because I know the owner of that Facebook page. Uh, we go back a very long way. And I think this is a great opportunity to have someone kind of represent uh, the Jets fans. So, Eric, uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I feel like uh, back when, you know, in like the early 2000s when I used to call into the radio station, like first time, long time caller. Uh, how you doing, Steve? I feel like that. So, <laughs> yeah. but now we're on camera. So that's, that's right. Absolutely. All right. So let's get right into it. All right. So I went ahead and we yeah, had, let me pop that up there for everybody. Let's see. There it is. Oh, that's right. I got it up there. Let me move it up here. Okay. So this way everybody can see it just like we do. All right, so what this is, is um, this is what pops up when you type in New York Jets, all right? So this is what, this is what popped up for me on, on Google. So I went ahead and I clicked this and I go, wait, wait, Jets argument, Woody Johnson, Robert Sala, I didn't, I didn't where, did, where did that come from? Even though yeah, it's right. like always something, there's always it's, something new. It's always entertainment. Irresponsible report from NFL Network, please disregard. No, uh, no shit. So, uh, and then of course you go down here and um, here it is on the Miranda NFL podcast. Wolf said she heard about the alleged John Sala dispute from a very reliable source. I am getting sick and fucking tired of these sources that come from absolutely nowhere that nobody is giving their name on these uh, reported stories or rumors. This dates back to the video I did about a month or two ago on that athletic hit piece uh, with Diana Rossini and Zach Rosenblatt, all about sources. None of them, not one source, there was a name to it. Not one. It was almost like they, 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 they were letting them off the hook by making it appear that there were sources that were being identified when I, I didn't find one. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I, there's not, these, these could be all imaginary sources, all I know. And there's also a lot of these people who are obviously out to get the Jets or people who just want to do whatever they We don't even know who these people are. So this is just another example of a reliable source and a team, the New York Jets, it just seems so easy of an organization to pick on. And it's just sickening. Yeah, I'm I'm actually a really appalled. This 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 is like constant, you know, back when someone I, I, what was it like um a couple months ago, I think it was during the season when they they were talking about uh Zach Wilson said he didn't want to come back or he was uh he was hesitant about coming back. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I think it was during this, the end of the season where they said that he was lucked to come back in and then, you know. Oh, it was Zach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So it's just nonstop. And I don't, I don't under, so, you know, if I was Woody Johnson, I would try to find out where all this is coming from. This is nonstop BS. They're making us look like a circus. And it's, it's just, it's quite appalling and disgusting as a, as a fan. You know, I've been a fan for a long time and I don't know why all this crap is happening all the time. So in between Zach Wilson and then of course, Aaron Rodgers with the VP thing. I mean, this is it's a clown show here. And some of the reporters obviously do a good job and some of them have credible sources. But the problem is, is that when we don't get a story that equals out to, oh, that actually did happen. So now the source that came from this particular person, he must have been right because it worked out this way. We found out that that was true. But I, I, don't, I don't recall the last time somebody ripped the jets about these sources and then we later found out, oh yeah, that was true. That's the thing that is just that that's what bothers me. And then and then the whole thing, of course, with Zach, I mean, that's a completely uh, different story that we can obviously get into the whole thing with Zach. Um, and that's just a story that I know there's a lot of fans that would just like to cut the ties. They would be, right. You know what? I just want to deal with this anymore. Let's just get rid of them. Uh, it's time to move on. But I am just so glad at this point in time that. Zach is still there because I do not want to see Zach get traded for nothing. No, if they sure. can't recoup something, fifth round pick, sixth round pick, I don't care what it is, then he's has to stay on the team. You cannot yeah. just dump Zach Wilson. Like, okay, so hear about this. What happened if Aaron Rodgers takes the Jets to the AFC Championship game 
uh, we'll say the tickets to the playoffs this year. And then next year, we're in the AFC Championship game. And then at that point, Aaron's done. Who takes over? I mean, unless they're going to use a pick in this year's draft, which they better. If yeah. they're going to trade Zach, then they had better use one of their top picks on a quarterback, which I actually think they're going to do. Because I don't think Joe Douglas is stupid enough to go into the season with Aaron Rodgers, Tyrod Taylor, and no young quarterbacks with, with some sort of a, a, a look to the future on his roster. I just can't 100%. see that happening. Yeah, you, you have to have someone to sit behind. You know, just, I mean, you know who does it the best is Green Bay. Green Bay with Brett Favre and then Aaron Rodgers and Aaron yeah, Rodgers right. and Jordan Love. So we definitely need to have someone sitting behind Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. They're great quarterbacks when they can stay vertical, of course. I thought it was interesting because, what, a few weeks ago, the story came out where Woody was talking about, we don't have any backup quarterbacks on, on the roster. So immediately, everybody's pointing towards Woody slamming Zach. Well, first of all, I didn't see him slam Zach. I said, said that we don't have a backup quarter, number two quarterback on the roster, whatever that meant. He yeah. comes then out last week and basically sticks up for Zach. Yeah. And and then so what's this so so what but what do re- reporters say about that? Well, that's you know he's, he's spinning that because he wants Zach to be a good trade target. Yeah, of course they're saying oh he's walking it back. First he was yeah. slamming Zach Wilson, now he's. I I just you know as an owner I don't know how he's so calm. I'd be on the news every day ripping the media with your fake sources and all this slander against me and Zach Wilson, and then I'm destroying the organization. I mean that's insane. Listen, I don't think he knows as much as other owners about football, but I think he has people around him that know fairly well. And so I think, you know, it would help him a lot, but you know, this, this constant BS of the media constantly ripping, you know, the jets apart. I don't know I, what I, what it sounds like to me, what it looks like to me is they're trying to destroy the locker room, right? Cause eventually the young players like Garrett Wilson, very pissed off last season. Uh, I don't think sauce Gardner's there, but uh, you know, like for example, Garrett Wilson, he's extremely pissed off. You know, he wanted to have a, an all ball out year. He didn't, unfortunately, because of Aaron Rodgers. Right. But so, you know, and how to tie that in is is because of all this BS with the media. I think they're splitting up the locker room. I don't think Salah's losing the locker room. I don't think Woody no. Johnson losing the locker room. I think the media is trying to pin the Jets against each other so that we end up looking like crap next season. It, it'll make it look, it, it makes good story. And, and, and when the team isn't winning, I think they're always trying to find turmoil without question, if they can pick that apart. And to answer your question before about um, what do you do, how do you find out about the sources and where this is coming from? Well, I think we already found that out because those coaches and the and Rex Hogan are gone. Yeah, That's why they're gone. The Jets cleaned house with those particular coaches and Rex Hogan because these were the, the, the these were the sources. Yeah. These were the people that were talking that shouldn't have been talking because they cared more about themselves and their own position in football than they did about making sure the Jets were a winning franchise and had a winning culture. And that does not make a winning culture when you have these types of people undermining everything that's going on in the building. So um, I'm glad about that. Uh, I, I think they've done a really good job as far as this offseason, and I'm not surprised about that. I've, I've been behind Joe Douglas 100%. I know there are some fans who are, uh, are kind of it being impatient, and I understand that. It's about winning. Even Joe said it. Look, there's no reason for him to get any respect. He hasn't earned it. Yeah. But I don't know how you don't see that Joe's done a pretty good job. Not a great job, but he hasn't done a bad job. He's done a pretty good job. What they did last year, there was a plan, all right? Now, uh, the plan obviously backfired, but – you don't go into yeah. a situation expecting the quarterback that never gets hurt to get hurt immediately. Yeah, that was a fluke. That was a complete fluke. Yeah. And you know, I'll be real with you. I was, and I didn't mean to interrupt, but I no, was one right of in. those guys. I was, I, I did. I'm not going to lie. I doubted Joe Douglas. You know, I was like freaking out, looking at my Twitter account, like, Joe, what are you doing? You're sleeping. It's nine o'clock. Let's get to work. And then, you know, he did, he did an unbelievable job. I, you know, I don't think he did like top notch, but he did a hell of a job, right? He got all these, he got Tyrone Smith, he got Mike Williams, he got all these guys, and he happened to get them all within the, the cap space that he had. I don't see a lot of uh, general managers that do that. I don't see a lot of general managers, like for, you know, this was insane. But what the Titans did with Calvin Ridley, I thought that was absolute insanity just to throw that guy 90 million dollars meanwhile joe douglas is like okay well we need money 
There's other people that need to be resigned. Let's get all these guys within the budget. And he did it. I mean, they don't – I got to give it. My hat goes off to Joe Douglas for getting the job done. And, you know, like I said, I was I was upset, but he did it, and now I'm happy. I'm ready I'm ready to see what the draft looks like. I think uh, the draft, I think he's, you know, he's still got to prove himself. We had a, a, a hit and miss draft last season, but, you know, I, I have confidence in him again. Well, uh, I think if, I mean, if you look at it, like as we look, matter of fact, I'll even pop up the Arlads uh, Jets depth chart here. And as you can see, just by just draft picks, look, I mean, you got Garrett Wilson there. You have Joe Titman. He found himself the Jet Center for the next 10 years. I mean, that yeah. is not an easy thing to do. That was yeah. very important. The whole Elijah Vera Tucker thing is injury related. That's yeah. it. So, Otherwise, he's very good. Yes. If he can stay healthy, that's a very good draft pick. Brees Hall. I mean, you had Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, and Jermaine Johnson, and Sauce Gardner in the same freaking draft. That was a hell. That I was mean, a come hell on. Draft. In general, I, I think he's done a solid job, and injuries decimated the team last year. I'm sorry, but. What is, do you think? Do you think the Chiefs win the Super Bowl without Patrick Mahomes? I, no, I mean, come no. on! I, I, I don't mean, even know who the backup is over there these days. Yeah, so I mean, come on! I mean, and and the whole thing too about the backup quarterback deal. I understand what 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 people are saying that you have to have a veteran back there, especially if the young quarterback wasn't uh, uh, really there to learn under that offensive coordinator, meaning Hackett. So, okay, right. then you, 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 you screwed up. I get it. But, again, you didn't expect Aaron Rodgers to get hurt. Now you've learned your lesson. You've got a backup quarterback, a veteran guy that you can turn to uh, if you need to. But like we just said, but you cannot just throw away Zach Wilson. You can't. And I, I, I'm sorry, but I have seen enough of this kid to know that he deserves a shot with – a competent offensive line and weapons. I think you give him a competent offensive line, weapons, and a, and a coaching staff that knows how to use him. There is no doubt on my mind he's a starting quarterback in the NFL, and I don't know how good he can be, but I'm sorry if Brock Purdy could do what he does in San Francisco. You throw Zach Wilson on the Niners, and I think he could do the same thing. I just think it's about where you are, what kind of luck you have, and where you get drafted, who are the coaches that are developing you. I think Zach's going to be just fine, and I just hope we're not dumb enough to just give him away for nothing unless we draft a quarterback in this year's draft with either our first or second pick. Right. Well, I did see yesterday that Woody Johnson did say I – don't, I don't know if we talked about this – that Woody Johnson said that if if no one picks up Zach, like if we don't get a trade for him, he's going to keep Zach Wilson yes. on the staff. He's going to keep him – As well he know, should. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I've been a, a love – it's been a love-hate for, uh, for me and Zach Wilson, you know, and I'm sure that's, you know, all of the – anybody that's a, a New York Jets fan. I do agree, though, uh, you know, he had no offensive line. He had Garrett Wilson. He had Brees Hall. But Brees Hall, remember, he got injured right off the bat. So that was a, that was a bust for uh, He Zach got injured, Wilson. yep, last year. Well, two so, years ago. When, when years and, ago. and remember that, the Jets were doing fine yeah. up until the time Brees Hall right. and Elijah Vera Tucker got hurt in Denver. Everything fell apart. Yeah, so, I, you know, I, I feel bad for Zach. He hasn't really had a stable team. People are always getting injured around him. It's not – obviously, it's not a fault of his own. And then, of course, you know, I, you know, Robert Sala is obviously a defensive mind, but we haven't had a very good offensive coordinator nope. to develop Zach Wilson. No. The floor was shit. Yep. Hackett sucks. I mean, so, like, I, I do feel bad. You know, and, and again, you were right. If, if we don't – Get a, if we don't get some kind of good compensation for Zach Wilson, we should keep him. Let him sit behind Tyrod Taylor, behind Aaron Rodgers. We just picked up all these different weapons uh, in this last uh, offseason free agency here. and Well, this free agency for this season. And, you know, I think, we, you know, wh whoever we pick up uh, in the draft, either it's, a, you know, in the first round, either it's like Brock Bowers or if it's Malik Neighbors. I'm not, you know, I'm just throwing out names there because I know we're at number 10. And if we do trade up. Those are weapons, and if Zach Wilson happens to come in, which is it, – it's a fluke, right? It was a fluke that Zach Wilson was in, and I don't think Aaron Rodgers will get hurt. I don't think Tyrod Taylor will get hurt. But if it comes down to that again, well, at least he's got weapons this time, and at least he has a wall to protect him. Yep, so and I different. think he deserves that chance if that were to ever happen. But, look, I, I think – and, look, the fans – there might be a lot of fans out there again, oh, I just we, – we need to cut ties. Uh, uh, some writers are talking about it just wouldn't be good for the locker room. To have a guy like Zach there, again, because he's such a bad seed, you know, going back to the thing about him not wanting to play and all this other stuff. So, again, if you're believing that, 
then that's completely up to you. Then, yes, you're going to have that opinion. But because I have not seen any proof of Zach Wilson being this bad seed, especially since all I've heard are positive things from Aaron Rodgers. Woody Johnson just talked about po Robert Salas always talked positively about him during during press conferences. So, yeah. uh, you know, his teammates have stuck by him last year. They were all look, he could have had his bad moments two years ago, but his, his uh, teammates were behind him last year. So, yeah. I, I, look, like I said, even if they let, get rid of him, this isn't about Zach. This is about having a young quarterback on the roster going into training camp. And it better either be Zach or it better be one of the picks in this year's draft because they are going to have an opportunity. Like, if they trade down from where they're at right now, they'll be able to draft like a Bo Nix. They might even be able to draft a Michael Penix. They can right. draft one of these quarterbacks that have all the, the talent in the world to be potential starting quarterbacks in the NFL. So uh, that's what I see happening is, and, and why it's another reason why I think just holding on to him until the draft is a good idea anyway, just to see exactly what happens in the draft. And right. how do we know? So we're just hearing that, that apparently the Jets couldn't get rid of him, that every team wanted – this guy and Howell and this guy and that guy. So I guess nobody wants Zach Wilson. Well, how do you know that? How do you know that Joe, that Joe Douglas wasn't getting phone calls and he was going, no, I don't want that. If you don't give me this, then I'm not interested in that trade. Now, how yeah. do you know that Zach, Zach couldn't have gone to Seattle for a fifth round draft pick? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's exactly what Joe's doing because Joe's being smart and understands that if he holds on to Zach now, that's that. That's what you need to do. And then you can go ahead. Maybe you make a move at the at, at the draft. You pick up a quarterback, and then like two minutes later, after you after you draft one of these young quarterbacks, you hear a deal's been made where the Jets have traded Zach Wilson somewhere. So yeah, just gotta I mean, be patient. It's true. There's and 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 if there's teams that don't like anybody out of the draft, right? Because they you know there's a, still some quarterback needy yep. teams, right? Yep. Or they need someone to you know sit behind a veteran. You know, and if they don't, if like, you know, someone gets screwed out of a pick because someone goes in front of them, well, there's Zach Wilson. And then, you know, they get desperate. They go to Joe Douglas. I mean, no one really knows. Right. And it reminds me of that movie draft day. No one knows what's going on unless you're in the war room. Of course, I wanted during the season, I wanted nothing but to get rid of him. But now that the emotions are gone, it's it's a game of chess. Right. So it's it's like. What what can we get? Let's wait to the draft. Let's see what's going on. And, you know, listen, besides the fact that he had absolutely, you know, no weapons, he had no offensive line. But when he has an offensive line, when he has weapons, he's actually pretty decent. I mean, I, you know, uh, it reminds me of the Texans game. He was throwing bullets. Oh, yeah. Right. And, you know, and of course, you know, I feel bad because it's constant. He's getting his ass kicked by the media all the time. And then, of course, it it it, it reflects in the way you play. But then, you know. Uh, Sala and Joe Douglas were like, listen, let it rip. It doesn't matter what happens. And he he freaking killed it in that Texans game. You know, I know it was – we lost C.J. Stroud because of our defense, but still he came and he just – he demolished. So Zach Wilson's not a slouch, and I can definitely see some teams – picking him up uh, and having him as a second or third string quarterback. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, we saw what happened in the Kansas City game. Uh, matter of fact, Chris Jones was very complimentary in the post game. Uh, about Zach and his ability. Uh, so those are the people. That's that's all I can trust. I'm just going by what people say. Mm -hmm. I don't believe or care uh, at all about rumors and sources. Yeah, I, know. Okay? sources. I don't care. Uh, yeah. If I it's hear a, a player a or a coach or a general manager or an owner say a positive or negative thing right out of their mouths, that's what I believe. Okay, that's you want anybody out there wants to believe the sources and the rumors. Go right ahead and do it. That's up to you. Yeah. I, I I've been in this business and I've been a fan long enough to know that if you do it my way, the percentages are completely on my side. If you do that, and so you know, but everybody can do what they want. Um, as far as the rest of the off season, again, the, the and the draft coming up. So the, the more the likely scenario, as long as that player is there that they believe is worth the pick, is to go with the offensive lineman in the first round. Okay. I don't think there's any doubt that that's the, the way they're going to go, and I think that's the way they should go, unless they believe that an offensive lineman that is left on the board uh, is not worthy of the 10th pick, and they can't trade down. All right, that's the only way. And if that happens, then you can go another direction like wide receiver or something like that. But um, I would hope that they'd be able to trade down because without, because you know they 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 need to recoup that second round draft pick, and I think that's important, especially if they wind up 
using that on a quarterback. Yeah. Um, that's something that I think they, they could they could wind up doing. Um, but I just I cannot see uh, again unless the offensive lineman is not there and they can't trade down. I can't see them going up wide receiver first because it's such a strong wide receiver class that they can get a quality wide receiver with their second pick, but they can't get a quality offensive lineman with their second pick. So that's why I say? think it makes too much sense to go with an offensive tackle first. What do you say about the boys that are in love with Brock Bowers? What do you say about the Brock Bowers? No Cole way. Bowers? No way. And again, the only way is if – see, I can't even say – the only way would be if – same scenario. You can't trade down and the offensive lineman – is not there that you want. And then it's up to wide receiver, tight end. Okay, in okay. that respect, I'm willing to let Joe... No, look, I don't even know if Brock would be there, but if Brock was there and they felt that Brock was a better fit than the receiver that was on the board, I'm okay with that. I just don't see it because the, those wide receivers, that chances are one of them will be available. I just think... I think they outweigh the tight end position because the jury is still out on Rucker. I mean, yeah. I think Rucker is is could be a fine tight end in this league I, if I he's given that. the opportunity. He hasn't he hasn't even had the opportunity yet because of injuries and being a young player and having to deal with crap offenses the last two years. Just yeah. give him a chance with Aaron Rodgers and a good offense this year, and Jeremy Rucker could be your starting tight end. So that's the reason you have more need at wide receiver than you do tight end. Yeah, and I, I, Joe Douglas, you know, seems to have the same mindset where you know he's it's a chess game. So I can definitely see him moving down, acquiring, you know, that second round pick and then acquiring some other picks, um, you know, and to make sure that we're fully loaded for this season and next season. I mean, listen, it's a make or break year for J.D. So, you know, and I think he likes his job. So I think he's going to, uh, you know, play conservative and I think he's going to trade down. Uh, we'll still get one of those linemen that we talked about. And then I think we'll end up, you know, getting a nice quarterback there in the second or third round. All right. Uh, before I let you go, Eric, here's the Facebook uh, page, the uh, New York Jets fan page with about 63,000 members, as you can see. So this is uh, we're both, of course, in here. Right. And like I said, I'll have a link in the description. Uh, how often do you engage uh, with uh, fans here? Uh, I engage all the time. I, I kind of step back uh, during the off season, uh, you know, because it's you know quiet. So of course, I did a little bit during the free season, but during the regular uh, football season, I'm in there all the time. I'm always engaging. I'm always posting things, uh, whether it's like positive comments or negative comments, uh, you know, mixed bag. But I'm always in there interacting with different, uh, you know, fans. Uh, that's always you know what I love to do. I love to continue to keep that brotherhood sisterhood going on. So, yeah, like I said, I'll have a link in the description for any Jet fans that want to sign up. And it is a really good uh, way to interact directly with your own fan base. I know we like to have that interaction here on, on the videos in the comments section, but this is uh, a way where you can interact with all uh, 63,000 members at once by just putting in your own uh, comments or maybe even including some information that you might see somewhere that is valuable and important uh, so the fans can check it out for themselves. So Exactly. As yeah. long as they're no, known sources. Don't be posting fake yeah. sources in there now. Yeah, no more sources. We're <laughs> done sources. All right, Eric. So uh, we'll talk again at some point. Uh, good luck. And uh, uh, so w what's your wish list for uh, the draft with that first pick? You, you're, gonna, you're hoping for uh, uh, Brock Bowers, a wide receiver, or an offensive lineman? I mean, so, you know, I'm, I'm after having this conversation with you, listen, the way you break it down, it, it just it's very logical for me after hearing you talk about it. You know, uh, I, I wanted Brock Bowers, but listening to you, uh, I definitely want uh, an offensive lineman. You know, we're building for that future. God forbid someone goes down. We need to have someone there. We want to like it's an all in season. So I, I'm now I've converted from Brock Bowers to, you know, that guy from Penn State or, you know, just any offensive lineman that's very decent because we like. If you and real quick, the whole I would say like half of the uh, NFL was on their second or third string quarterback last season because yeah. the fact that there was no line. So I definitely think because of how bad it was last season and there was like slim pickings, we have to at number 10 pick up a lineman. Either you let him sit or you let him, you know, you let him go out in camp and then you have him sit behind one of these talented guys, let him learn from there. And then that's our future. We don't we don't want to ever be caught with what we had this last season. 
it caused too much PTSD. And yes. I don't think, you know, <laughs> I don't think we want to do it again. Yeah. And Joe's had a, enough bad luck, uh, except for Elijah Vera Tucker so far with the, with, and Tippman, uh, with the yeah, linemen. That's it. Makai Becker was awful. What? He can't protect anybody. Yeah. And, and, uh, but again, yeah, that was one. It wasn't like you couldn't read the potential signs because how big he was. Could he stay in shape, the diet and all. So the red flags were there. Unfortunately, you know, he rolled the dice and uh, lost, uh, unfortunately, that one. But again, you can't get them all. Um, And 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 people are going to point to Zach as well. But the jury is still out on Zach. I don't think there's no doubt about that. People want to write him off. You write him off all you want. But whether it's on the Jets or whether it's somewhere else in the NFL, Zach Wilson is going to have a name for himself at some point somewhere. And uh, there is no doubt in my mind about that. So. No, for sure. And you can't you can't hate on Joe Douglas. Never forget Sauce Gardner, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, all in the same season. Jermaine Johnson. Listen, I all think, in one draft. I think this season we're going to have another Hall of Fame draft. I, I just I, I feel it in my bones. I, I Joe Douglas is on the hot seat, and I don't think he's the type of guy who's just going to screw us. I think he's going to go ball out. And he's going to show Woody Johnson who he is and what he's made of. And I think we're going to have another amazing draft. All right, Eric. Appreciate it. I like the good vibes. There's not enough Jet fans out there with good vibes. That's for sure. Thank you. I so, appreciate it. So, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, enjoy the draft. Thank you. We'll see you soon.